On this episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast, we talk about Violence Unimagined by Cannibal Corpse. Welcome to another episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast. I'm Kale. I'm OJ. We're two professional broadcasters. We like metal and we like to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, both of us uh, uh, were sick boys here recently. Right. Like last week, as recently as right now. Yeah. Yeah, Both of us are still getting over a cold. I was told to leave work twice today. Really? I was coughing my ass off. I, I I heard it was Kim told me you should maybe go home. And then I heard Renee at one point as I'm walking downstairs to get my salad out of the fridge. I heard her say, go home. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I mean, I'm also 22 years younger than you, but like right. the, I was mostly fine by Friday. Yeah. Uh, I had mostly stopped coughing, uh-huh. um, mostly just con- nasal congestion. Mm-hmm. Alternating between completely stuffed up and having to, you know, go through tissues uh, like there's no tomorrow because Mm -hmm. I just cannot stop (coughs) leaking snot out of my nose. Yeah. Same Uh, here. I feel like I'm melting. I feel like I'm physically melting. God, I hate that. Like, I remember being a little kid Mm -hmm. and having a cold was great. (laughs) <laughs> Having a cold that was bad enough, you got to go home. Right. It was amazing. You stay home. You could play video games. It was great. You do whatever. That was fantastic. And when you're an adult and yeah. you have a job, you, mm-hmm. you you develop a cold and no one fucking cares. Right. You still no one to gives work. a shit. You still have bills to pay. <laughs> yeah. Like, and and the if fu- it's not something that's <laughs> going to be, you know, potentially deadly or harmful to right. your co-workers you probably are still gonna have shit to do and or if, if you stay home you'll have shit to right because we can do our jobs from home exactly if you're physically able to do mm-hmm. your job and you can do it from home then yeah you, you still got you still got it right yeah and, and kind of the fun of staying home is gone anyway because as adults we're both single swinging fellas mm-hmm. uh you know, when we get home from work, we do all the shit that we would have stayed home doing anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can play video games. Well, I'm, I'm going to play video games. Time to play video games. I'm going to eat junk food. And- I, uh, yeah. I haven't done a lot, like, because what did I do on Saturday even? I had, I had work to do, and then I was, uh, what, I, I, had some work that I needed to do, uh-huh. and then I think I I, ca- I caught up on some shows that I was watching, mm-hmm. and then it was D and D that night. So this weekend, really, yeah. Oh, on Saturday on night. Saturday night, right? So I didn't really do. I didn't play any video games, and then today I haven't played any video games other than a bit of Baldur's Gate three. Yeah, uh, I've been playing video game. I'm really close to finishing Dark Souls three. Um, I am on probably. Considered by a lot of people to be one of, if not the best boss in the game. And Uh it's also one of two (coughs) mandatory bosses that I have left. The other one being the final boss of the game. Um, And so I'm I'm very close to finishing it. But uh, immediately after I got to Slave Knight Gale, who's Mm -hmm. the the last DLC, (coughs) the last boss of the second DLC. He was your helper. uh, Yes. The immediately when I got to him, Mm -hmm. like I gave it a couple of tries. Um, I I can reliably get to his second stage pretty well. And I just need to learn his his uh, attack pattern in his second stage. Mm -hmm. But um, the day after that uh, was when I started to feel like absolute fucking trash for a while. And so I was like, I can't play Dark Souls. No, I'm not in the shape to be fighting high, you know, end game bosses. <laughs> uh, I'm not putting myself through that. Let's just play some Baldur's Gate three because right. it's turn based and I can handle that. <laughs> um, you know, your reflexes aren't up to snuff. Yeah. Speaking. So <laughs> this is the second time we've made the joke. Yeah. Sitting here. But uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, yeah, you, I imagine, have been playing Elden Ring. I have been playing Elden Ring and, and I have not been, uh, you know, where, where I should. But I actually 
I got to the first uh, boss there. The you big, got the to big Margit. Boss. I got to Margit, and I tried Margit uh, a, a couple of times, mm-hmm. and then I realized I'm just going to leave yeah. the shit that I, that my pile of uh, stuff there. I'm not going back yeah. to Margit right now. I'm, I'm going to go fight a bunch of other. I've, I figured out a bunch of mechanics in the game that there I didn't go. know already. Like, Did you get oh, your fuck. horse finally? And my horse worked out. I had the horse whistle the oh, whole time. I to- that's what I told you. I think last time we saw each other because you <laughs> went home yeah, that, I, that day and I was like, you probably have the horse whistle in, in your inventory. I did. Well, the thing is, it's, it's, it's ring shaped. Oh, it doesn't okay. look like a whistle. And so, uh, and so okay. I, 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 I sort of moused over it and it's like, you know, well, you whistle for the sp- spectral steed. And I'm like, oh, shit. F- fuck, I've had this the whole time. <laughs> well, I, not the whole time, but I mean, most of the game. Yeah, like, most of the most of the time at that point. Yeah. And, and and the world, by the way, in this in this game is is a panic attack large. Yeah, I mean, it's it is, huge. It is fucking huge. And I've watched some videos and hey, here's some areas. I'm like, I that's nowhere near anywhere I've ever been. That area. Yeah, it's it's a pretty massive world. I think it is uh, more or less this. It's about the size of Skyrim, I think. Is it the same size as Skyrim? I, I think it's about that size. But the thing that makes it so much more intimidating is that it is a FromSoft game. So it's full of shit that that's going to, wants kill, you to now. kill you. Yeah. And it's also like it's. You know, the, the problem with Bethesda games is usually that they're, you know, wide as a lake, shallow as a pond, generally mm-hmm. speaking. There's not a lot of really deep, really interesting areas or dungeons that you can get into that are really, you know, uh, interesting. And you spend hours and hours inside the dungeon. And, right. and what like uh, from what I've heard in, mm-hmm. you know, for a lot of the dungeons in Elden Ring. Yeah. Uh, in, you know, areas outside of like the first area, which is, is the first area called Limgrave. Is that yeah. what it is? I think like outside of Limgrave, especially like there's a lot of dungeons where it's like, Oh, this is an entire area in dark souls three. Like this yeah. is the, this is the size of an entire, you know, area of a previous from soft game. Right. And you, and you, you walk up to the, it'd be like a seemingly innocuous cave. It's almost semi hidden by a thing. Or there are also, I found out there are caves in this damn game that are hidden by, behind a, a, f- a false wall. Oh, yeah. You just walk. You have to walk. You have to know right where it is and walk into it. Yep. And or or it was in Dark Souls. You would hit it with something. Yeah. The illusion. Would. Yeah. No, it is the same. OK. Yeah. Yeah. No, they love to do that. FromSoft loves to put in like mechanics where it's like you're not going to see all of our game. Right. That's fine. This is for the people who are, are really, really, you know, thorough. But this, yeah, that's that's what I want, though. I, yeah. I, I crave that. I, I want to see all the shit. And then I've seen videos. Well, OK, there's this spot, spot here and you have to go travel for a long time. And then it's hidden under this church. And you're it's like, what the fuck? And, oh, yeah. and and you can't do this other part unless you punch go here. every wall. <laughs> you just got to been my model all my life. You've got I mean, to punch every single wall. Right. One of the it, something's going to disappear and there'll be treasure behind it. Right. Uh or, or lots of death, lots of climbing down. And then treasure. And then treasure. Uh, but yeah, I, I, uh, FromSoft is is very much, they're very much that kind of right. uh, developer where there's, you know, there's stuff in almost every corner. Yeah. Um, it's it, But they're going to make you work for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that's a, a great thing about their their game design. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, the good thing is like, you know, you tried Margit a couple of times. I right. think, you know. If you've been I left level, all my runes there, though, if you've been leveling <laughs> up since then, as, as you've traveled I around, am. then you can just you can go back and you'll probably be a, a fair bit better at uh, at that fight. I've got bigger weapons and I've been to the round table. So I've had I've had my my weapons upgraded. Yeah, it's you just got a shield. And that seems to be the nice thing about Elden Ring is just, oh, this is too hard right now. Yeah. Uh, I can go and do other stuff and it doesn't feel monotonous. And so far I've been playing it like Matt. Where he's no ex- magic. No. Oh, no magic. Yeah. No magic. He just, ex- I think he, he, he's uh, changed his he tune folded. <laughs> he folded finally where he, yeah, I, I don't know who you need to go to, to respect, but, um, Oh no, you don't. You, yeah. You just respect on your own. Oh, you, you can, I didn't know you can do that. Just how like sites hey, of grace. Yeah, it's Sites of Grace. You you go in and, and you can upgrade all of your... Oh, uh, no, like respec meaning like... What do you mean take You specs? use an item... No, like re-specification is what it stands for. Right, yeah, yeah. You, you use an item and you get to 
cha- it like erases Take- all of your stats and gives you a shitload of runes or whatever. Oh, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, that's that that's a thing in most RPGs. At some point, there's usually a character you can go and talk sure. to and you can change all of your stats. Or like in Skyrim, when you make something 100 percent, yes, make it legendary. It's and like then suddenly, that. yeah. yeah, that's called respecking. Right. Um, uh, in, in Dark Souls three, there's a specific character you need to go talk to. I'm imagining there's someone like that in Elden Ring as well. Mm-hmm. I imagine um, that's something you do at the round table. Probably. I don't know. Uh, I haven't played Elden Ring yet because I'm still in Dark Souls three. Yes. Yeah. See, but, I, I'm the coward. I'm the one who got, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to play Bloodborne and I got, <laughs> I got like, you know, a, I don't blame a, you. A tenth of the way through. I'm like, oh, this is too frustrating. I, I'm going to go play a harder game again. You did. <laughs> you did, though. I, I mean, I think Bloodborne is probably the hardest of of them. Yeah. Uh, that, <laughs> either Bloodborne or Sekiro is probably the hardest from soft game. All things considered. Mm-hmm. And I, I haven't played either, but it just seems because like Dark Souls one, especially is once you get the hang of the uh-huh. mechanics, most things in that game happen pretty slowly Right. So you have a fair amount of time to react to them. The attacks are really telegraphed for most of the bosses. Um, yeah, B- Bloodborne's not some yeah. sometimes like that, but no, they they're very quick attacks. Bloodborne requires a lot more, you know, fast dodging and, and yeah. Sekiro requires a lot of parrying, which I'm fucking terrible at. I cannot parry to save my life. I, I um, parrying is also very handy in Elden Ring. Oh yeah, if it's always good. Yeah, if you can get the hang of it. And yeah. some people are just like, you know, instantly. That's actually one of my things that I'm actually fairly good at. Yeah. It's good for you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really bad at parrying. Uh, yeah. Block, they shock and then stab them back. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm just, I'm not good. Or are you talking about guard counters? No, I'm talking about guard counters. Yeah, You're right. Okay. Guard counters. Yeah. Parrying is different. It's, That's right. In, in Dark Souls, at the very least, it is uh, the left trigger. Right. Um, where you, you like swing your shield out uh, and mm-hmm. it like knocks them away and it staggers them and you can do a riposte where they like stag. It's like a backstab, but mm-hmm. from the front. Sure. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I haven't gotten there yet just because I've been sick and haven't finished Dark Souls 3 yet. There are some optional bosses. I know there's at least I at least want to go back and do uh, and give a genuine try of on the nameless king yeah uh who's an an, an optional boss uh, i want to give that a, a good college try uh-huh. but uh i if i get sick of it i'm i'm not super attached to actually beating that boss uh-huh. then there's dark eater madir who's the extremely difficult dragon boss of mm-hmm. dark souls 3 because every dark souls game has a uh, dragon boss, usually in the DLC, that's absurdly difficult. Um, and the one in Dark Souls 1, which was Calamite, I tried a couple of times and went, nope, I don't care. I'm just imagining what that TV show would be like. Oh, welcome to Dragon Boss. I'm Dragon Boss. <laughs> I'm just sitting here in my, on top, in my lair on top of all my gold. These are my kobolds over there. They're my guys. <laughs> I'm Dragon Boss. I'm the dragon boss. <laughs> Today we're making a cake for a lady. <laughs> I'm, st- I'm the dragon boss, but I'm still making cake. <laughs> we're still in Oboken. <laughs> dragon boss. Uh-huh. This cake is nothing but fondant. Because everybody in that tastes so good. I just don't fucking understand fondant. Why? <laughs> I know. I understand. It's, it's great to sculpt with. Yeah, it's As people want. People don't want to eat their cakes, apparently. Yeah. Which every, is stupid. Yeah. You, you cut through the fondant. And you go, oh, this is some sort of a, a confection. And you chew it. And it's like, oh, this is fucking This gross. is like eating clay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't get it. He says I'm, fondant. Yeah. Fondant. Yeah, I've watched a, a yeah more cake boss than I ought to have watched. <laughs> sure, simply you know I you know when you're a kid or a teenager you don't really get to choose what's on what you watch on TV. Right. Uh, I've watched a lot of Project Runway in my time because again <laughs> I didn't get to choose what was on TV, and you know what? 
I actually enjoyed quite a lot of Project Runway. It's a good show. I'm a bad parent because <laughs> I don't choose what we watch on TV. I just give it to Maximus. Here, just whatever. I don't give a shit. I don't know if that's bad parenting. I think that's, you know, the different strokes for different folks, maybe. Well, yeah, tr- true. And uh, this year, the they announced the the Oscars. And I hadn't seen any of the movies that were nominated for an Oscar, like yeah. the, the regular best picture movies. I had seen every fucking one of the animated features. <laughs> well, That's all of them. So they, a lot of them were probably pretty good. They were. They were all great. Yeah. I enjoyed them all. Uh, well, speaking uh, of movies, I saw The Batman. The Batman, yes. This weekend, yeah. The Batman. It was, it was, uh, it was very good. My, Good. My, Glad my, to hear. My take on it, I'm not going to spoil anything for you, but mm-hmm. I, I don't think I will by saying this, um, that my take on it almost immediately was, uh, here's what I think in my head happened at some point. Uh, Bruce Wayne tried to do the Batman thing. I don't know if you knew that or not. Oh, just, but, Bruce Wayne is Batman? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Sorry, I ruined it. Ruined it for everybody. So anyway, uh, he tried to do the Batman thing, mm-hmm. and he bought all the shit. He you know, did all the Batcave thing and yep. got the car and everything. And, and first night out, he got killed. And what happened was <laughs> his dead body was laying there and uh-huh. nobody was around. And a young actor named Jackie Earl Haley found uh, <laughs> found the Batman uh-huh. and, and stole his uh, costume and ma- managed to figure out where the Batcave was and has been Batman for the last two years. Why Jackie Earl Haley? <laughs> because, oh, because he's, he's Rorschach. Yeah, he's, okay, so this version of Batman is basically Rorschach. But, but not, but not you no know, Rorschach. It's like the actor Jackie Earl Haley. Just after he was in, uh, you know, what's the name of that baseball kid movie? Uh, uh, Bad News Bears. Okay. <laughs> I. There was too many layers to there that. Was I too got many layers lost. I, I apologize. I got lost somewhere in there because it's like, okay, I know who Jackie Earl Haley is, yeah. but that's not who plays Batman. Batman's no. Robert Pattinson. Right. But yeah, okay. I, I definitely got that sort of vibe from the trailers that is, you know, kind of a... He's very worried. Oh, Gotham is a is dirty city. Yeah. It's probably less of a... Scum at night. Probably less of a violent misogynist than Rorschach. But, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, Although... He's not a violent mistake. He's still pretty fucking violent. Yeah. But but not, you know, he's not yet yeah, the misogynist. How was, how was, because it was advertised as a more detective. Yeah. Type. Okay. Very so it much is, so, yeah. It is more of a detective sort of mystery style of Batman. It is. But with the pummeling the absolute shit out of criminals as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Because that was, that's been missing from almost every Batman movie is the fact that like, yeah, he's the world's greatest detective. Yeah. That's part of his title. Yeah, 90 years ago that was established. <laughs> so he when the comic premiered in Detective Comics. Right. Um but he's a great detective. That's what he did. He did a lot of detecting in this. That's good. Uh mm-hmm. and like I I'm excited for uh Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman because I think that's an that's amazing casting. It was. I think I think she she's a very good choice for Catwoman. And and I, I think w- all the casting decisions were really really good. Paul Dano actually made me shiver uh, a couple of times in this as movie. As the Riddler. Paul Dano is such a he's such a good actor. Yeah. He's such a fucking good actor. Mm-hmm. Uh, I need to go see the Batman. Uh-huh. Well, I, I should make some time. But t- tomorrow I'm, you know, watching more Lord of the Rings. Right. So I, it won't be tomorrow. Your birthday tomorrow. It's my birthday tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It's my birthday. It can be 19. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Let me take another sip of my beer. <laughs> it's OK. I'm, I'm your cool uncle. I'd rather you drink it here <laughs> in your apartment that you pay for. <laughs> I'd rather drink the beer that you bought at the liquor store. <laughs> I'd rather you drink the beer that you bought at the liquor store <laughs> here in your home. Than, uh, but that you pay for with your full time job. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> no, I'm going to be 26. Yeah. Uh, which it makes me uh, prime age to listen to The Greatest Generation by the Wonder Years again and really identify with it too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. I remember being 26. It's the year 2000. The year t- in the year 2000. <laughs> OJ was 26. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, when in the year 2000, what what Cannibal Corpse album was coming out? In, in the year 2000, I don't I don't know what the newest Cannibal Corpse album was. In the, in the year 2000, let me let me look up the Cannibal Corpse. 
discography. Mm-hmm. That is the, is that is there a band that re- has released an album called discography? There uh, has to be. Uh, there has to have been at some point. Two thousand. Uh, well, it was between albums. Right. Uh, so there was a live album that came out. There was live cannibalism, but nineteen ninety nine was bloodthirst. And then 2002 right. was gore obsessed. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we're talking about Cannibal Corpse. Indeed, today. their latest album. The uh, the best selling death metal band of all time. Violence Unimagined. Uh, the yes, their newest album from last, from last year. year, Violence Unimagined. Uh, and I got to say, like Cannibal Corpse is one of those bands where it's like, mm-hmm. I'm never going to object to listening to Cannibal Corpse. No, but I never really seek Cannibal Corpse out because They kind of don't really do anything for me other than like, yeah, this is good death metal. You know, my 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 only complaint about Cannibal Corpse is my favorite thing about Cannibal Corpse. Yes. Which is that they do the same thing every time. Every song. They're the ACDC of death metal. (laughs) Oh, hey, do you know that Cannibal Corpse song that's a brutal death metal song with body horror in it? Um, I mean, the, yes, all their songs I do. <laughs> I do know that one. The one with the really gory lyrics and yeah. really the on the album with a really disturbing art. Yeah, that one. That one. Yeah, it's it's, you know, they're they're They are a I don't want to say a one trick pony, but no, they, it's it's like three tricks. It's like three tricks that they do very, very they do well, them extremely well. They're yeah. very well practiced at those tricks. Mm-hmm. The tricks have changed only slightly right since te- 1990 right because the technology has improved uh but yeah they they're you know they're a three trick pony i'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> uh-huh. give them that um and if they and if they ever decided hey you know what we're gonna go in a different direction it would be the death of the band probably they, would, yeah <laughs> there's a reason they're loved as much as they are it's because they are the most consistent <laughs> probably the most consistent metal band period <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know if they, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not, uh, in tune with the, the cannibal corpse fandom as it were. I don't know if they've released a album that's widely regarded as bad. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know if that exists. I'm not, I'm not aware of it. Like Metallica, obviously everybody, almost everybody does not like Saint Anger. Like, like, right. It's widely accepted that Saint Anger is a bad album. Mm -hmm. And depending upon who you ask, there's probably half of Metallica's discography that people would be like, those are all bad. Um, I've, I've seen them three times in concert mm -hmm. and I agree (laughs) that the half their discography is bad. bad. Yeah. Uh, but Cannibal Corpse, it's like, I don't hear anyone say anything bad. Right. They don't have a bad album about any of their stuff. Cause it's, all consistently the same thing. It's good. There are right. people who don't much care for Chris Barnes's vocals. Right. Uh, because he, you know, was, I, I think Chris Barnes is kind of the origin of the cookie monster. Right. Joke that death metal vocalists sound like the cookie monster. Uh-huh. I think that was kind of born with Chris Barnes. Uh-huh. Um, but like, I, I've, I don't think I've ever heard anyone, speak uh, poorly of of George Fisher's vocals and no. almost everybody likes Corpse Grinder and how can you not like Corpse Grinder mm-hmm. he's a he's a seemingly very cool dude who has by the way a new album out as yeah. Corpse Grinder yeah he has a solo album yeah I don't know if it's a uh, solo album it's it's a band called Corpse Grinder or maybe it is a solo I don't know he's got well uh, yeah it's you know it there's a artistic depiction of him on the cover right. so uh, in classic sort of, you know, and they do this with the Cannibal Corpse live albums as well that have depictions of the members of the band where they're all much skinnier and more muscular. <laughs> yeah, that, I mentioned in the, in the cartoon version, George has a bigger neck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be something to see. Right. Can you imagine uh, him getting a caricature drawn on a boardwalk somewhere? <laughs> they, <laughs> a fair or something? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it would be 90% neck. <laughs> the man is just, he's got a massively, it, it's just like it's shoulders and then it, like a, a trapezoid. Right. His head is a is a trapezoid with a lot of hair coming up. Yeah. From, yeah. With with long black hair uh-huh. coming up from his shoulders. That's what it is. Right. His his uh, from the shoulders to the top of his head is shaped like a coat hanger. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Just no, no uh, uh, well-defined neck to speak of. No, it's just a, a lump of muscle, essentially. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's in his 50s and he still fucking helicopters his hair. I don't know how he does not have serious neck issues. I think just because it's just such a well insulated spine. It's just it's, it's <laughs> there's so much padding. There's so much it. padding around it that it's in good condition. I like I really don't know. Like as far as I've heard, I think maybe he's had a couple of health issues related to his neck mm-hmm. that I vaguely remember hearing about. I'm not sure, but it's it's as far as I'm aware, it's not something that's ever been a serious issue yeah. because every time you ever see a video from a live show, he's windmilling right. his hair around. So he hasn't had any Tom Araya sort of uh, level neck problems. Neck problems, yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure if uh, you were to... Uh, sculpt his hair into like an aerofoil <laughs> it would generate thrust <laughs> it would blow the front row back a little bit <laughs> yeah you could you know you could blow you could definitely uh uh throw some air out into the crowd which they'd probably appreciate yeah thanks for cooling us up they're at a cannibal corpse show right. it's probably hot people are getting sweaty it's packed hot sweaty uh, yeah uh, everybody's got beer farts you know <laughs> that's the crowd at a cannibal corpse show, it is I'm sure who the hell are they going on tour with it was, it was some, bizarre. Yeah, it was somebody that was like not quite fitting. It was uh Was it Bring Me the Horizon? No. I it uh, was it Deborah was a Gibson. weird fit. Deborah Gibson. <laughs> so the, the I think we're uh I don't know, cannibals now. I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> I'm trying to remember who it was. It was it was a yeah, it was a weird uh <coughs> lineup. Mm-hmm. Um let's see if I can BTS. <laughs> oh uh, no, I'm sorry. BTK. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Uh, I might be thinking of of something else because I know they're going. I with, might be thinking no. of a different a different because right the at least the one that I clicked on, which is going on at this moment. They're with Cannibal or they're with uh, Whitechapel and Revocation. Which uh, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, white absolutely yeah. Whitechapel and, and Revocation for sure um, makes perfect sense. Uh, a, a Shadow of Intent occasionally yeah. playing on that, which sure. I'd, I'd go to that tour at 100%. I'd be more excited to see Whitechapel and Shadow of Intent, but, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe it was Corpse Grinders we, tour. Uh, yeah, I can't remember who we were thinking of, but yeah, it was it was bizarre. It was it even Cannibal Corpse? I don't I don't know. There was a a, a bizarre. It was I'm thinking of Metallica. Metallica's oh, right. going on tour with someone weird. Yeah, uh, with a, a weird Bob Seger or something. <laughs> it was it was like you know clearly a uh tr- an attempt to bring in a younger audience right let's see um who it is uh um what does song kick say who's going to be with them i'm t- oh god yes i'll accept your cookies fuck off <laughs> Greta Van Fleet and Ice Nine Kills. That's who right. it is. Ice Nine Kills is like a, a very sort of scene metalcore band that yes. I, I've seen a couple times at Warp Tour. Uh, they always look very well dressed. And and Greta Van <laughs> Fleet is a, a, a weird kind of choice. I think there's there's audience crossover for sure because Greta Van Fleet's, you know, doing the whole kind of Led Zeppelin thing. Right. But uh, there's definitely <laughs> audience. Like Greta Van Fleet's uh, audience is either 20 years old or 70 years old. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. It's either 20 yeah. year old hipsters yeah. or uh, and I should I should honestly list like give a try listening to some Greta they're, Van Fleet. They're I'd good. Probably, they're very they're very competent. I'd probably enjoy it. Uh-huh. I, I need to listen to more um, uh, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Sure. Because they're insane oh they're great i they're also their album output is i don't get it how the fuck do they make so much music yeah their their albums don't they don't have a release date they have a released time yeah <laughs> here's this their day's new- album is coming out at noon 
<laughs> then they have another album coming out at seven. <laughs> they did like kind of like a thrash metal album a couple years yeah, ago. It was good. It was a really good, a really good album. But uh, speaking of speaking of good albums, let's get back to Violence Unimagined. So this is <laughs> this is the yes. fifteenth. Cannibal Corpse album. Is it their 15th album? The 15th studio album. Um, At least their, you know, full, you know, LP. Uh, It was produced by, uh, give me a second. It was produced by their new guitarist who's filling in for uh, (laughs) for Pat. (laughs) What's Pat? Pat Pat O'Brien. Yeah, for Pat O'Brien. I almost said Pat Sheridan. That's fit for an autopsy. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, their new Pat O'Brien, uh, who's probably a, on permanent leave from the band. Yeah, well, because he's in prison. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and crazy. Yes, that was yeah, that was a bizarre uh, chapter, <laughs> and like that was a weird couple of weeks. You know what? I actually saw the news story on that. Eric Rutan. Eric is the, Eric Rutan, right? The, yep. Yeah, the new lead guitarist, uh, who's also produced their last four or five albums. True. Um, so he's obviously very familiar with the band. I wonder how they make a set list when they go on tour. <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot to choose from. There's a lot to choose from. And, and most what, what of are the criteria, I mean, probably what, you know, the songs that are most popular, you, you kind of have to have hammer smashed face. Well, in there. yeah, that's gotta be there. You kind of have to have I come uh, blood. Yep. Uh, yeah. For nothing else <laughs> than corpse grinders <laughs> intro of it. <laughs> <laughs> Which I never get tired of hearing. <laughs> the song is about shooting blood from your cock. <laughs> I come blood. <laughs> That's uh, I never get sick of hearing Corpse Grinder introduce that song. It's it's wonderful. Uh, by the way, yeah. the, the lineup because like I mean, some people might not actually know. Yeah, uh, the people. Sure. Uh, the, <laughs> the band was founded by. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's see. It was. I know Paul. Paul, Paul Mazurkowitz was. Yeah, yeah. Mazurkowitz was one of the founding members of the band. Yeah. Um, the other, like the other founding member of the band was uh, Alex Webster. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jack Owen Jack is Owen. not with the band right. anymore. He was the bass player. Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah. Um, and then Chris Barnes was also. Uh-huh. Uh, universally hated <laughs> yeah they were, as a person yes <laughs> decent vocalist but, yeah sure uh yeah it's you know chris barnes has a reputation for being an asshole what, what was the quote to seth putnam seth wasn't putnam. right about many things <laughs> but he had a point about chris barnes <laughs> <laughs> They're both so, dead now. Right? No. They are. Yeah, yeah. No, Chris Barnes is alive. Is he alive? I'm almost. I'm pretty sure, unless I'm completely missed that because he's been doing knows? Six Feet Under for. Oh, sure, that's right. That's ever right. since he left uh, Cannibal Corpse, he's been doing mm-hmm. Six Feet Under. But yeah, Chris Chris Putnam or not Chris Putnam, Seth Putnam, Seth Putnam is Putnam. absolutely dead. Yeah, um, I believe it was a heroin overdose uh, in like <laughs> 2009 or something like that, which no one was surprised by. Right, That's unfortunate, but it was like Seth Putnam died of a heroin overdose. Oh man, can you believe Seth Putnam died? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been kind of moving that stick around. Like, the, the Kyle can yeah, yeah. I've been moving that magnet around on my <laughs> fridge calendar for, for a couple for, of weeks now. For, for months, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been a floating engagement. <laughs> Chris Barnes is 54 now. Yeah. Lives in Buffalo. Okay, yeah, because that's where the band is originally from. Mm-hmm. They're thought of, I mean, they're more or less thought of as kind of a Florida band at this point. Cause I think they've all been down in Florida. Or, right. They're, they're down in Tampa. They're in the Tampa area. Yeah. Most of them. Cause that's, uh, I, that's where George was from. Right. I think, you know, around the time George joined the band, that's probably after that is when they moved down to Florida, but <laughs> it just makes me happy that it's a death metal singer. George, George named George, but yeah. <laughs> uh, corpse grinder. Uh, was in a band yeah. called Monstrosity before that, which right. Monstrosity is still around, by mm-hmm. the way. They're they're still out there kicking ass Do it with um, a different vocalist. Yes, with it with a different vocalist. Yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, and he already by the time he joined Cannibal Corpse, he already had the neck. Sure. Uh, and he was before he joined Cannibal Corpse. He's actually a featured vocalist 
on um, Effigy of the Forgotten mm-hmm. by Suffocation, mm-hmm. which like I saw that when I was I was listening to that album and I saw his name pop up and I was like, when did this album come out? Oh, this was before he was in Cannibal Corpse. <laughs> this was before he was really Corpse Grinder uh-huh. that, you know, everybody knows and loves. Uh, I, and he, he guest vocaled on the uh, D. Snyder album recently. Sure. D. Snyder of Twisted Sister. Why not? You're listening to it. He doesn't sound any different than really any other D. Snyder song. <laughs> and then suddenly, suddenly there's, there's, corpse, there's Corpse Grinder. <laughs> yeah. And he's like yeah. one of those voices that like there's a lot of death metal vocalists that mm-hmm. sound more or less the same. Mm-hmm. You always know it's Corpse Grinder. You always know. It, yeah. He's got a very, a, a very recognizable mm-hmm. sort of growl. Um, very, very kind of, and you can very understand raspy. Yeah, it's very raspy, but it's still very raspy growl. S- still very well pronounced. You know what he's saying? Yeah, he's, he enunciates pretty well, generally yeah. speaking, uh, especially compared to Chris Barnes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, it, it's uh, he's it, instantly recognizable voice mm-hmm. in death metal, which is saying something. Yeah, um, there's a handful of those. Yes. Uh, do you think this album slaps? <laughs> Every That's moment, a dumb, yeah. It's a dumb question, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was looking up, generally uh, quite favorably received. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's a lot of Cannibal Corpse albums that critics are kind of like, that's eh, a Cannibal Corpse yeah, album. Yeah, sure. More or less, that was the response to this one, but it was on the very positive end of that. It came out to 788 Right is the the reviews that I that I averaged out. A lot of the people I've heard uh, review this say this is uh, some of the best later Cannibal Corpse work. Yes, yeah, is, you know some of their best work of the last mm-hmm. you know fifteen twenty years. It's, that sort of. It thing. doesn't necessarily have the uh, the the spark of Tomb of the Mutilated, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. some of the you know the the wildly creative energy and, and progressive <laughs> undertones of right. Tomb of the Mutilated, but. Uh, well, and it's, it's interesting to me because, you know, we talk so much about how Cannibal Corpse does the same thing every time, but it's like, there are other bands of their, of their generation and their era that, Mm -hmm. that, that are still around that also don't do the same thing every time, you know, like Napalm Death, right? Napalm Death's latest album is pretty wildly different from their original work. Right. I didn't know Barney had a high falsetto like that. (laughs) That would that would be incredible to, to hear. <laughs> yeah, uh, there was that. There is that uh, video of him performing with Dream Theater, yeah. but they were doing Metallica cover. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he, you know, he wasn't. I would love to hear uh, uh, Barney do uh, like. Uh, 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 why can't I remember Puffy Face's name? Oh yeah. I, I, <laughs> James Labrie. <laughs> James Labrie, right? I would love to hear uh, Barney try and do James Labrie style vocals and, mm-hmm. and see what it sounds like. It'd be hilarious if he sounded better than James Labrie. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny, funny to, to, to see the backstage. Barney was giving him notes. I mean, <laughs> just like we've, you know. <laughs> the new it would be incredible if they're like you know we've announced uh, you know james has decided to step away from the band uh you know to, to take care of his health uh we hope you'll all welcome our new vocalist barney greenway <laughs> that would be great that would be amazing <laughs> you, we hope you'll all welcome our new vocalist travis ryan <laughs> Which honestly, though, like hearing like clips uh-huh. from like studio of Travis fucking around, mm-hmm. I think his clean singing is actually probably not bad. <laughs> right. Like they're like he'll fuck around and sing like show tunes uh, on occasion. And it does not sound bad. We, uh, it, you, you've seen those. I think there was only one that I saw really of, uh, you know, what's in your bag episode. Yeah. Where, you know, you know, the, the guitarist is all this great thrash metal, death metal uh, stuff in his bag. Had, you know, black metal. The bassist had like some black metal albums. Stuff. Right. And Travis was it was all like like 80s new wave and pop yeah. and, you know, 90s uh, alternative and stuff like that. <laughs> and it's wonder. I mean, you know, everybody okay. has diverse tastes, sure. obviously. But, yeah, it's uh, I, I, I've seen that video as well. And I thought it was very entertaining. All of Travis's picks were wonderful. But it, uh, I, I've actually done that. I, I actually do that very frequently. I'll be listening to, you know, Sting's debut solo yeah. album from 1985. And then, oh, God damn it. I uh, I need some death metal now. You know what I mean? <laughs> For me, it's, you know, yeah. it's the modern version of that where it's like, I'll yeah. go from listening to like 
Aaron West in the Roaring Twenties, sure. and like, all right, now it's time to listen to some some Whitechapel or something. Right, it's, you know, two very very different flavors. Listen to some Laws Rocket. Yes, <laughs> but uh, what's your favorite song on this album? Christ, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I was sitting down before you showed up, and I was just like, what. What do I what do I even write down for my favorite song? Because they like truly Mm -hmm. they're all good. They are. None of them really jump out. I mean, the the opening track Murderous Rampage is good. That's that's a good song. I'm trying to remember which one I remember. Should we just read the song titles? Uh, That's that's always always entertaining. Fun with Cannibal Corpse. So number one, we have Murderous Rampage. Uh Number two, we have Necrogenic Resurrection. Uh Number three is Inhumane Harvest. (laughs) Number four is Condemnation Contagion. Uh, number uh, five is Surround, Kill, Devour. Mm-hmm. Which, that's a good song, too. Yes. Oh, yeah. Then we have Ritual Annihilation, Follow the Blood, Bound and Burned, Slowly Sawn, <laughs> Over Torture, <laughs> Ceraments of the Flayed. Uh, that's, that's the whole album right. there. Um, and honestly, like, compared to their stuff in the 90s, mm-hmm. That's tame. That's very tame. Those titles are pretty tame compared to like the the song titles in the 90s. There's no fucked with a knife on here. (laughs) Yeah. There's <laughs> none of I don't even want to say. I don't want to say it, most of the yeah, yeah, yeah. most There's of no them meat hooks out of me on here. There's yeah. no <laughs> uh, like a, a lot of the song titles are pretty restrained compared to the they are. stuff. But uh, do you do you have one in mind for what your favorite song is? Other than like you said, you mentioned Murder's Rampage. Uh, Murder's but. Rampage. And uh, and also so we're going to go back to the, the list here. Um, yeah, I also enjoyed um, uh, Surround, Kill, Devour. Okay, I enjoyed that. These are the ones I remember, and Inhumane Harvest. I remember yeah. those three. I wrote down Inhumane Harvest for my, my yeah. favorite song. I like the main riff, right? That, it's, it's great. Uh, where it sort of it, it's it's like a couple of chugs. It's sort of a, it stops and starts, and then mm-hmm. there's this um, like a gallop kind of a thing. Yeah, there's a gallop, and then it goes mm-hmm. uh, really like a tremolo picked mm-hmm. uh, part that sort of breaks in, <laughs> kind of awkwardly in, in sort of a weird time signature that mm-hmm. I that I enjoy because it's different. Right. Um, <laughs> it's a thing that sticks out. Yeah. But yeah, like this is, you know, if you've listened to any mm. cannibal corpse before uh-huh. and enjoyed it, you like I this. have a hard time imagining that you will dislike this right. album. Um, w- what metal are you bestowing upon it? Like Maz Kanata to Chewbacca? Um, yeah, it's a silver medal. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a silver for me, too. Sure. I mean, you know, there's I've, nothing wrong with this. Nothing at all. I will listen to it again. I'm sure I will. Yes. I'm going to come back to it. But it's just it's more cannibal corpse. It is. It's there's you know, there's nothing wrong with it. But also there's nothing particularly special about it either. <laughs> it's just <coughs> more consistent work from a band that has been doing consistent work since the early 90s. Yeah, well, actually, 89. Since 80, before 80, that, 80, yeah. yeah. So it's... Over uh, 30 years. The nary, a, nary a bad album. Making quality death To metal. my knowledge, anyway. Exactly. Because I'm, I'm not, you know, intimately familiar with their entire discography, right. so I, I don't... Maybe there is an album that Cannibal Corpse fans consider to be bad, but I haven't heard of it. No. No, I don't think I don't believe there is one. I I certainly haven't heard of it. So. I, I have my favorite Cannibal Corpse album for personal reason, but that's because that's when I was having a time where uh, my mood intersected Cannibal Corpse. Ah, at, see. At, that, at that point in my life, and their new album. You needed the some was, violent music. I needed something violent. Gallery of Suicide. Ah, oh, it was like their sixth album, I think, fifth or sixth. Sat, yeah, it's one of the ones in the nineties. Yeah. Uh, so next week, uh-huh. I, I was going to do uh, my first thought was the new Silent Planet album. But I think I, I think I'll save that for maybe next one down the road. I was listening to bits and pieces or I listened to the whole thing and then listened to uh, a bunch of songs over and over again over the last couple of days. And mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, we got to talk about this next week. So I want to talk about Oh, What the Future Holds by Fit for an Autopsy. All right. It's their newest album came out earlier this year, I believe, or very late last year. How many albums um, have we heard by them? Just the two? Or? Um, we have only, I think we only talked about, uh, I think together we only talked about um, uh, their one previous to this. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, so, but how many albums do they have? Sea then? of Tragic, Tragic Beasts. They right. have, they've released a whole bunch, a whole of, bunch albums. of albums. They they have, I I. <laughs> Don't have an accurate count. Uh, oh, I remember forgetting who released the uh, the uh, uh, ambient album. 
Uh, uh, um, Are you talking about Blood Incantation? Yeah, Blood Incantation. Yes, Blood Incantation released like a like a, a spacey, dark ambient right. album. That's pretty good. It's very good. The funny thing is you're listening to this Blood Incantation. You get about five minutes in, you're going, this isn't going to be metal, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> well, and that's the thing with Blood Incantation is that like you listen to those first five minutes, you're like, this could turn into a death metal song at any moment. <laughs> yeah. Because that's how Blood Incantation rolls. Right. <laughs> but uh, it, it does not. It's no. just, you know, spacey sort of dark ambient, which I, I think that's fine. I right, just chow some shrooms and yeah. put on some Blood Incantation. Some space shrooms, bro. <laughs> what if, like, aliens created uh, humans, though, bro? Oh, man. What if CAT wow. spelled dog? Wow. That, um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's Bon Incantation's vibe. Yeah. I don't judge them for no. it. No, uh, I, I actually applaud them for yeah, it. Yeah, it's great music. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, next week, Oh, What the Future Holds by Fit for an Autopsy. Awesome. I think it's. I a, love their music. Uh, they're a fantastic band. Yep. I love hearing new stuff from them. So mm-hmm. uh, that'll be next week. Till then, uh, find our social media pages. I, I've been neglecting to say that because I kind of don't care. But, yeah, we don't really uh, do Twitter anything. Twitter and Facebook, Bronze Metalist. You can find it. We'll, uh, I actually don't post episode links any there anymore because uh, Libsyn doesn't do it automatically anymore for where? some reason. On, you, uh, where? I have to manually set a time to, re- to uh, post uh, stuff on Facebook and Twitter now. Oh, really? When I upload episodes mm-hmm. and it's annoying and I don't feel like doing it. Um, so you so, don't post new episodes on Twitter uh, or on I, YouTube? Uh, <clears throat> I, I think YouTube is still going there, uh, but on fa- like the Facebook and Twitter posts, I think you let it lapse. I, I don't, yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. But anyway, <laughs> thanks very much for listening to another episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast. I'm Kale. I'm OJ. Congratulations. Congratulations.